What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, also known as EMB. Welcome back to From the Dark. Finally, my move is completed, and I have internet again, and we are back to play in some Dark Souls. Uh, today, we're going to talk to a couple of interesting NPCs. We're going to briefly speak with Ziegmeier here, and then we'll speak a little bit more about Andre. Andre is the one I want to talk about the most today, though. But let's go ahead and talk to my onion bro here. Man, it's good to be back. Hmm. Hmm. That's how I felt waiting on my internet. That's really how I felt. Hmm. 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 Oh, forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall. Or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge. No matter how long I wait. And oh... Have I waited? So, here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. <laughs> Still closed. Still closed. Hmm. Alright, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about Ziegmeier today, but the, the first things I, I, will, I will say that in the first place, he's actually not really fat. That, that's just the armor. Like, that's Miyazaki-san and said in the, uh, I think it was Miyazaki that said in the Design Works interview that he's actually not really fat at all. That's just the way the armor is designed. Uh, the armor was actually designed by, uh, I think it was Waragai-san, FromSoft, one of the, the designers at FromSoft named Waragai-san. And uh, he designed it actually before Dark Souls was really... Uh, before he was assigned to the Dark Souls project. It was kind of a, a test to see which which uh development team he was going to be assigned to uh but once they started designing the character of Ziegmeier Miyazaki-san liked the design so much that they just used it just like that and uh one thing I'm trying to show here is that this helmet opens from the side it actually flips up and uh that was something that Miyazaki-san really said he wanted to show in the game but they just really couldn't do it uh but he wanted to show, like, Ziegmeier popping his helmet open and then grabbing a bite to eat or something like that. Uh, really just interesting little details that you can't really easily notice in the game. But this is Ziegmeier in front of C Sin's Fortress. Can't get here yet. Uh, interesting thing about Sin's Fortress, like, it, where I logged out here on this pathway the other day, uh, your save file actually does say Sin's Fortress. So this, this counts as part of that area. And it's just interesting because you haven't really... Uh, I don't think we've found any evidence. or we. That, I think that's the first mention of Sin's Fortress in the game is actually you can get it through the, the load file screen. But the main thing that I want to talk about today is actually this gentleman down here. Mr. Andre of Astora. This is a very unique NPC... You can immediately tell he's got a unique model, but one of the, the really interesting things about him is he's the only NPC whose mouth actually moves <laughs> when he's talking to you. Well, the only human NPC, I guess I should say. Well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of Astora. If you require smithing, then speak to me. So, from the fact that his mouth moves and the the amount of detail they put into his hair and beard here and all this like giving him this very unique model you might guess that he's actually very important and uh originally he was going to be like it, in the game he's actually just a blacksmith sorry y'all he is just a blacksmith but originally he was intended to be a descendant of lord gwen and this comes from the once again from the design works interview uh, and he was going to open the path below Firelink by moving the goddess statue. This setting has completely changed, and he is just a blacksmith at this point. But it's interesting to me that he would have opened the path to the Flame Successor's ritual place. I already talked about that before, that Firelink Shrine, what it actually means is something like... Uh, the, the literal Japanese is something more like Successor of the Flame, it, the ritual place of the Successor of the Flame. Uh, he would have been a descendant of Gwyn, but he would not have inherited the flame. He would have only allowed you to do so. Uh, could have been a candidate for the son's firstborn. 
uh, as a descendant of Gwen. Like that could be a very direct descendant, you know. Uh, or this can be this can be taken as evidence that the firstborn isn't in the game. Uh, personally, I think that. Uh, even if they hadn't done away with the setting, Andre would have been a descendant of Gwen, but not the Firstborn. Perhaps he would have actually even been a descendant of the Firstborn. And I'm going to get a little bit meta here. This is, this is a little bit of meta speculation. This is really far out there. So just, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But this is kind of what I think, is that if the Firstborn was banished to Astora, it would explain why... It's Andre of Astora, why Andre is from there. If he was originally going to be a descendant of Gwen, if he was originally going to be a descendant of Gwen from Astora, then it could mean that the firstborn was banished to Astora. It's also interesting that Solaire is from Astora, who's someone else who he's actually searching for his own son. He's wanting to inherit the flame. And also even why the undead of Astora, like Oscar, are taught that they must inherit the flame. That's their tradition that's passed down through their families. In Astora, and you get all this from Astora. So, to me, I, I, like I said, this is a bit of meta speculation, but I would say that the firstborn of Lord Gwyn was possibly banished to the land that became Astora, either before it was Astora, perhaps that was even the founder of Astora, for all I know. But, uh, yeah. But this, this, this character doesn't really. The setting was changed, so he's no longer a descendant of Gwen, but you can definitely tell that that's what they were going for when they, they made this character. Most weapons and armor are mighty sturdy indeed, but every hunk of metal has its breaking point. If you notice durability running low, it's time to repair. You can ask a blacksmith like myself, or do it on your own with a grindstone. The nice thing about weapons they never betray you, so pay them a little respect, eh? That line, they never betray you, like, I, I have to wonder at what point his dialogue was actually developed. Like, if it was developed before they changed his role, or if it's something that they put in there after, as just kind of a teaser, as a hint to what his, his role might have been. Uh, like, was he going to be someone who felt betrayed by the gods, betrayed by his ancestors? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. If he if he wasn't originally truly intended to be the son's firstborn, then perhaps he considered his banishment to be a betrayal. It's just interesting to consider at this point, though, because we know that setting no longer exists. But uh, when exactly was that dialogue created, I wonder? There are two types of weapon forging. There's reinforcement, and there's ascension. Reinforcement is simple. It strengthens the weapon and nothing more. A simple task for any blacksmith. Hell, you could even do it yourself with a smith box. But ascension's a finer art. It alters the weapon's properties. Ascension is the territory of we blacksmiths. A smith box just won't do the trick. Start out with reinforcement. When that loses its charm, you can consider a censure. As you've noticed, this land is flush with the mad and wicked. You won't make it through the night without employing my services. <laughs> the land is flush with the mad and wicked. You can forge armor just like you do weapons. Forging armor is even easier than forging weapons. Whether you forge weapons or armor first, well, that's up to you. But nobody wants to see you go off. So whatever you do, you'd better do it well. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you do, you better do it well. Okay. So <laughs> what? He's got some interesting stuff for sale. Uh, first off, Titanite shards. But this, the crest of Artorius. This crest opens a door in the Darkroot Garden sealed by ancient magic. The door leads to the grave of Sir Artorius the Abyss Walker. Many adventurers have left for the grave, but none have returned, for they make easy prey for local bandits. With such dangers, the crest can do more harm than good in the hands of the uninitiated. Smith boxes. Armor boxes. He also sells a variety of weapons. Let's 
see. I think not a lot of lore. Yeah, okay. Yep, just had to check these to make sure we're not missing anything. All right. And we can, of course, reinforce our weapon here. Of course, the Drake Sword we can't reinforce. Because it takes a special material to do so. Let's see. I wonder if I can fast roll with that. Not quite. What's my burden looking like? Let's see, I've got 23 endurance. I don't think arrows add to your burden. I can't remember. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't add to your equip load at all. Would expect to be able to. Oh well. I think before we do other stuff, I think we'll actually head down into Dark Root Garden for a little bit. Do things a little differently. The range on that Titanite Demon, though, man. Need humanity. Interesting, all the little hints that this was the ruined land of Ulasil. Like, these glowing flowers right here. Light is... Very much a thing of Ulasil. <laughs> Like magical light. That's 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 their thing, man. That's what they do. Picked up a little poison remedy there. That's useful. It's one good reason to actually come here to the Dark Root Garden early before you go to Blight Town. Let's get that. Nice little hidden pathway over there. We'll we'll worry with that another time. Drake Sword makes very short work of these guys. If you have a base level normal weapon, it can take a few more hits to actually deal with them. But the Drake Sword's getting the job done. Timing my rolls properly there, although we could just block that blooming one so we can get rid of Toxic. Uh, there's a little ambush right here. Just an interesting thing that if you... No, not that. Well, you can do it like that. You can spoil that ambush with certain attacks. Like, that or the... That's what I was trying to do. The forward jumping R2 will also spoil that ambush. You can go ahead and trigger it early. Otherwise, when you move forward, he pops up. And it's one of those really nasty little things, too, because there's that enemy up ahead, and if you're not walking slowly through the area like I just was, if you just kind of run up and start fighting this guy like for example with a base level weapon and then this one pops up behind you and things can get really nasty for a new player really quickly of course if you know they're there or if you know how to get a stronger weapon before you get there it's nothing at all very important item right over there very very important let's see just looking up. I believe we can... You can see the tip of the wing of the boss of the area. Right there. I love all the stuff that you can get a preview of if you're just... If you're looking around and using your eyes. Down here you can actually see this tree moving if you pay attention. Uh, it, it's one of those things where like if you don't know it's there, you, it's like, oh, who could ever notice that? But then if you actually just stop and pay attention for a second, you're like... Wow, that's so obvious <laughs> that there's something going on there. We'll see that guy here in a little while. It looks like... I guess I guess it's not aqueduct. I guess it's kind of a roadway. I'm not sure. And here's the crest door right here. Speaking of looking around, from here, I think we can flat out... Yeah, from here, we can actually just straight up see the boss. 
But you know, I honestly on my first playthrough, I I did not notice that guy up there. I didn't I didn't see him at all. Looks like some sort of ruined fort or keep. And interestingly enough, you can actually see this hidden bonfire from here as well. Something that without online messages it, it would, might be difficult to find but if you're using your eyes you actually could notice it I mean it's possible right <laughs> be wary of right very good advice actually quite a sneaky little ambush here I tend to not want to trigger this because uh, it just after you trigger it they're always going to be there messing with you but we're going to do it because we want the item and well that's how it's done our soul of a nameless soldier Dark Root Garden. Yeah, if you just stop and watch for a second, you can see the roots moving and see that there's something weird about this tree. But it would also be very easy to miss if you just were walking by, for example, first playthrough. Like, actually, you just came through, if we think about it from a new player's perspective, you just came through the fog gate, so you're thinking, oh shit, what's up ahead? And you see this big area here, like, there's kind of a path lit up by the flowers, and there's this enemy on the ground right up ahead, and an item over there, all competing for your attention, trying to draw your eye. So it would be very easy to miss, even after the tree's gone, it's easy to miss that over there. Good luck. Hidden path ahead. Good advice. Whoops, forgot about you. Oh, wow. Hitboxes. Some green blossom. Actually, I guess we should check the lore on the moss. Toxin is a more vicious form of poison which quickly leads to death. Moss clumps without a flower are useless against toxin, and a lack of these moss clumps could lead to an early demise. Where is the poison? Poison can be exasperating, so be certain to carry the needed quantity of these moss clumps when destined for an afflicted area. Caused by sharp spikes or blades. <clears throat> That's bleed, of course. This tree is a lot more... <laughs> he moves a lot more actively, doesn't he? Alright. There's some frogs down here. I don't remember where they're all at. I call them frogs. I don't know what else to call them. Where are they, though? I guess that one hopped up. Interesting, we can't see through the canopy of the trees, I suppose, but... We are down below where we were before. These cliffs on either side, that's that's the how we walked into the area. And these stone walls are actually part of the fort. Well, I mean, maybe not this one specifically, but there are stone... Uh, stone remains down here that are part of the fort that the moonlight butterfly is i don't know how to say that guarding it maybe 
Is he guarding in the fort? Oh shit. I need to get the fuck out of here. That little ambush. Actually, we would do well to equip our heater shield here. These guys have a magic spell. Actually, a miracle. Tranquil Walk of Peace. This was actually one of my hints that this place was, in fact, Ulasil. Believe it or not, the fact that these guys can use a quote-unquote ancient magic. Sounds crazy, but... And at the time, too, it was it's one of those things that people were like, that's just such a tenuous, speculative... Oh my god, I was trying to do the jumping attack, but right there. That's just tenuous speculation. Turned out to be 100% correct, eh? These guys are a good source of these green blossoms. Which I forgot to read earlier. This uniquely bitter, biting herb is sometimes harvested in large quantities, but normally it is an annual plant found near water. Makes sense for these guys to, to drop it. Clearly, they can live in the water. Or at least live near the water. That's where they ambushed us from, the water down below. Hmm. The way that water's moving around. Soul of a proud knight. All that for the soul of a proud knight. Just trying to look into the basin down there. The water is flowing. That's it's interesting because I heard I heard the sound and I was thinking, is the water actually moving? It appears to be flowing. Hmm. Be wary of back. Yeah, if you just sprint up here, then you're gonna get ambushed from behind. Ring ahead. Yep, actually, this is something I didn't really even think about this. This is actually a good place to use Green Blossom now that I think about it. Speed your stamina recovery for dealing with this guy. Huh. Because you can get behind them, and normally that's going to bait them into doing Tranquil Walk of Peace. You can actually use that to get your stamina back quick enough to finish them off before they can do anything to you. <laughs> Never even considered it before now. All right. There's the wolf ring. Fabulous, fabulous wolf ring, which we will immediately equip. Boosts poise. Uh, actually, we'll raise it from 0 to 40. Big, big poise boost. One of the special rings granted to the Four Knights of Gwyn. The wolf ring belongs to Artorius the Abyss Walker. Artorius had an unbendable wheel, will of steel and was unmatched with a great sword. This is your first Artorius lore that you can get. And uh, this body, not Artorius, this, this body is actually probably just a grave robber who was trying to escape from the forest with this treasure. Not sure how he got this away from Sif. I mean, that's that's my uh, speculation, my, my, my take on it. Like, there's no 100% proof on that. If you make that jump, you're right back here where we were in the beginning. I 
but yeah as we get as we get uh like the tranquil walk of peace miracle and other stuff i can talk more about figuring out ulasil based off of things like the ancient stone actually the keyword ancient was very important getting that from the equipment of the stone guardians i wonder how much more endurance i would actually need to be able to fast roll with my wooden shield Hmm. What to do? What to do? Actually, I'll I'll sleep on this. I'll figure this out, and we'll we'll make that play tomorrow, guys. I am Marcus, also known as EMB. This has been from the dark, and expect a lot more regular uploads from me now that I'm in my new place, with better internet. Everything is good. Life is good, guys. I'll catch you next time. Later. And of course we're going to do the thing. Of course we're going to do the thing. We do the thing! <laughs>